Hi and welcome back to the hot house. So things are progressing pretty well, um, but uh, it was quite cold overnight. I think it was around eight degrees. Uh, that's Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in flamingos, but it's getting down to be quite cool. But as soon as the sun comes out, like it is absolutely boiling hot inside here. I don't have a thermometer, but I'm guessing probably close to 30, maybe a little over. It can spike really rapidly. Uh, as soon as the sun comes out. Outside it's still only 13, but in here it's very warm. So one of the things that I'm having to do is to open these up by hand and then close them up at night time or getting close to night time um, so that the um, hot air can escape and it doesn't get too hot in here. And I usually open this one up over here as well, all done uh, manually. So that's not ideal. And I thought at one stage, wouldn't it be great if I could do this using a linear actuator? So I've got a linear actuator. Um, I think I'll probably use an L298 motor controller to control it. So we'll go down to the lab and have a look at that. And then maybe this one here actually doesn't open. It's, it's sealed off because the levers broke. Maybe I'll use this one as an example and see if I can actually raise it and lower it. Firstly, semi-manually I suppose by pressing a button um, maybe like by ESP home or the KC868 that we've already had a look at in a previous video um, but ultimately it should maybe ideally adjust according to the temperature in here so that if it starts to cool down or maybe time uh, factor then this will um, this will close down but if it heats up it'll open up anyway let's go and have a look at the actuator and the motor driver and see if we can't get it to work here we are. This is our Hoodland. Um, wow, very gangster. Hoodland electric linear actuator, uh, rated 50 newtons. If high school physics is remembered correctly, I think that is five kilos in normal earth gravity. So that should be enough to push that window up and pull it back down again. 12 volts, uh, 7.5 centimeters stroke. Winged band, I don't know what that means. Oh, winged band bracket, okay. Winged band bracket sounds interesting. Oh, oh, that's the that's the wing there. Okay, so that's for connecting it up to something. How I'm going to connect this up in the hot house, I have no idea. And there's a couple of little uh, extra thingies to help that along. This saddle clamp, someone is. I don't know. Anywho, um, this also says 12 volt, uh, 15 millimeters per second would indicate that it's probably got some sort of control mechanism already. Hmm, that's interesting. All right, so let's have a look. We've got 12 volts coming in here, uh, and then I'll just plug this in and see. I guess we'll go negative to negative and positive to positive. Stand back. <laughs> this could be a short-lived experiment. Let's have a look. Nothing's happening. Come on, man. Hey. Oh, look at that. Wow, nice. And then it just stops. Okay. And I'm guessing that if we reverse the polarity, it's going to go back the other way. Oh, if I, as long as I keep this plugged in. Here we go. Yeah, it's a bit flimsy, that, but it is doing the right thing. Nice. I wonder what the, I wonder what the strength of it is. Let's, let's try and stop it. This is a bit dodgy, this wire. Let's try and stop it with my finger. Oh, and the wire has broken. So that is the end of that experiment. Yeah, I'm going to strip this wire back and fix this up and we'll try that again. And we're back live. Uh, soldered some header pins on there for the win. So where are we? We're trying to push out, I think. So that's going to be there and let's have a look. And there, yes. Okay, it's actually, yeah, that is actually quite hard to stop. And I think that's more than enough. Oh, don't do that. That's more than enough power to, yeah, that's actually pretty good. That's more than enough power to raise and lower this window. I'm pretty happy with that. Putting it on there will be interesting. Um, not quite sure how that bracket's going to run. The other thing is, how do I swap this from going, I mean, I can do this, I can go out and actually swap these wires over, which defeats the purpose. 
Um, but what I really need to do is have a circuit which alternates this backwards and forwards. And of course that would be an H-bridge circuit. And so a motor driver like this one uh, comes into its own. Even though we can just plug this in and have it do its thing, no big drama. Um, this has got a few advantages. Um, it's got, for instance, two controls, uh, I believe. Yeah, we've got an out one, out two, and out three, and out four, which means we can control two, uh, two of these actuators, which actually could end up being quite handy. Uh, and then also we've got our 12 volt and our ground in and our five volt. Um, and then we've got our control stuff here, which is so small I can't even see it. But I'll put a graphic up over there for how we connect up the controller uh, ESP32, I'm guessing. Um, let me just see if I can see that with the assistance of... It says... What does it say? I can't even read it with the... Oh, it says ENA, IN1, IN2, IN3, IN4, and ENB. Okay. So, um, yeah, I have to remind myself what that means. Looks like a couple of jumpers here too. Um, speed control? I don't know. There's our L298 doing all the hard work. There's our 7805, which should allow us to put 12 volts in or 24, I think even up to 32, uh, and get 5 volts out, which, you know, would be okay to drive a microcontroller. Or, I mean, not in this case, no. It'll be done separately. But maybe I'll just connect up a nano or something like that and just have it go in and out just for proof of concept. Let's do that. So a little bit of nerdling and uh, I've got some code on here. Uh, the code will be on the GitHub, uh, which I'll link below and also on this video and also on the blog. So hopefully you'll be able to find that. And it's just called Linear Actuator. I've just got it on an ESP32 development module. Uh, later on, we'll look to put it on the KC686, that sort of control module that we've seen before. But for the moment, we just want to see if it's going to work. Uh, so I've got 12 volts coming in. Uh, this nonsense here is just that I've got a common ground between the L298 module and the ESP32. Uh, a bit of a kludge, but that works fine. Uh, also, I have decided to use the uh, linear voltage regulator on here which is the 7805 uh, to provide a V in of five volts to the module, just to make it simpler. So 12 volts coming in, uh, the yellow wire here is five volts coming out to the ESP32 common ground. Then we've got our three control wires from D13, D12 and D14. Uh, you'll see that in the code uh, that comes into uh, IN1, IN2 and EN. Uh, and that is all on this side. So this is now 12 volts coming out and uh, we should be able to just go to the open and close window page. So that's been the web server has been pushed out from here using our OTA software, uh, as we've seen before. But this is a new page, so it's got oh, it's actually open at the moment. So if I press close, uh, Chrome's complaining that there's no internet. Well, of course there's no internet. We're supposed to be out in the wild here, but <laughs> the window closed. That's a good thing. And open. Slightly slower speed to open. I don't know if that would mean more talk. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. But I uh, just thought that'd be a cool thing. You can see that in the code. Close again. Yeah, that's terrific. And if I want to update the software, I can do that over the air. No need to uh, connect this up to a computer anymore uh, because it's on the over the air project. All the files on GitHub. Let's put this uh, close to the window and see if we can push it up. That'd be pretty cool. Well, here we are in the hot house. It is hot, and I've got three of the four louvers open using the levers here, so Armstrong method. Uh, but this one here, which was broken, this is where I've got the linear actuator hooked up, and uh, the L298 module sitting over there has got 14 volts coming into it. Uh, because I did discover that the module itself uses two volts to do its thing. So if you put 12 volts in, you're not gonna get 12 volts to your actual actuator, which is not great. So 14 volts coming in, 12 volts to this guy. And um, I'm just, I'll am just i show you what I see on this screen as well. So this is the, the new page. And you can see that there's an extra button there that says open and close window. So I'll push that. Takes me to a page which says open, close, and return to main page. So fingers crossed we press open. Interesting. 
Nice. That looks like full extension. It doesn't quite open as far as the other windows though, so maybe we need the 10 centimeter version, not the 7.5 centimeter version. But it certainly had no trouble opening it. Let's try closing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, so that's fantastic. So um, now all that remains, I guess, with this project is maybe to um, to get it going through some sort of home assistant thing or some sort of external thing so you don't actually have to be standing. It seems pretty silly, doesn't it? Stand here and press a button uh, and have the window that's right there going up. So the idea is that you do it from outside. Even better still, if it's done automatically in response to what the conditions are in here. Great. So I'm going to call out the circuit working for this week and we press on with a hothouse project. Uh, I will say just between, uh, if you've come this far in the video, that uh, the YouTube algorithm is smashing me at the moment. So um, if you have a chance to, to do your thing, please do your thing. It will help. And uh, it'll give me an idea that there's someone out there at least uh, who's watching this. So yeah, anyway, we'll see you next time. Bye.